APIs are everywhere and if you don't know how to approach an API and find vulnerabilities then you are definitely missing out on a lot of bugs whether you're a bug bounty hunter pen tester or just a web security enthusiast before we jump into the video though I'm going to quickly do a shameless plug a lot of you guys have been asking for an update to the Udemy course it is here if you have Udemy access already it is there you can go get it for free it's a part of what you have purchased for in the past if you don't have access you want to get it there's a ton of new content on XSS CSP uh, client side phones CSRF you name it it is all also going to be updated three more times in the next six months all you have to do is click on the link down in the description or the pinned comments and get it for half off as of today all right now let's jump into the video well in this video i want to talk about some of my favorite vulnerabilities that i look for in an api how to look for them how to approach them and why are these the ones that i go through starting with your generic oas top 10 because i want to get this out of the way but the generic oas top 10 is the vulnerabilities like your xss your i doors you want to look for your ssrf any vulnerabilities that you would find in a traditional uh, application you also want to look for those in an api because the api is the back end of this system so any vulnerabilities that is covered in an OWASP top 10 or any version of OWASP top 10, then it is kind of also applicable to uh, an API. I don't want to cover this because I feel like there's a lot of content around looking for these traditional web bones on an API. So I want to kind of take a deeper approach to hacking APIs and kind of show you what is the vulnerability that I look for. So I wanted to kind of get that out of the way. But now let's talk about the additional vulnerabilities, starting with looking at authentication vulnerabilities because authentication is a thing that i think scares off a lot of hackers when it comes down to looking for vulnerabilities and by that i mean a lot of times hackers find an api where they can't authenticate to maybe it requires some credentials and a lot of people actually don't look for them and there's a lot of ways you can actually do that the obvious approach to looking for credentials for an api is just obviously going on github doing the generic putting the url of that website or that specific api into the search and looking and seeing if anything has been leaked but that only works if that specific domain or subdomain has been mentioned in a repo and if it has then you can look for those keys and pull them out and use them but also the other thing that you can do is looking at the specific header names or a cookie value so if a cookie value has something very unique to this application or to this website or this company then also you want to look for that and see if you can't find anything but i feel like github has been the easiest to clean up a lot of companies are more aware of leaking credentials on github and a lot of hackers are looking for it but i think something that's not fully covered yet is postman actually you can go on postman and use something like porch pirate i think that's what the tool is called it's been an amazing one that it's in my toolkit that i use but you can just type in a search for a company name and relate it to this specific asset but this is just also very noisy so you have to do a lot of manual work or just have some scripts or wrappers around this tool that's going to clean it up and give you better results but postman is a really good place because a lot of times people just dump their api specs into a file and then they just post it on postman.com and they forget that their keys may have been hard coded this has got me some really cool bounties and even if i haven't gotten any bounties then it's giving me access to a lot of cool assets that i've played around with and it's generated leads for me so keep that in mind that is one approach you can look at postman github paste bins go on google and do some google dorking but always remember that there's always a way to get into these applications whether it's self-registration or looking for credentials so if you see something that requires you to be authenticated don't get scared find a way to get authenticated the second one and it's kind of hand in hand with this specific vulnerability type is using x forwarded like headers to bypass authentication because sometimes a lot of these applications are whitelisting or allowing specific ip addresses whether that's a local host or whether it's the range of the vpn that this company uses so if you can find a way of finding out what is the ip range that they use or you can brute force for it or just maybe put local hosts in there this would get you past the first authentication mechanism and then you have to battle the whatever is behind that specific authentication method so one of the examples that i have recently in my discord some of the hackers that i work with found this asset on a bug bounty program and none of us could authenticate and somehow somebody put an x forwarded for header on there and it spit out a different different error message than the one that we were seeing previously and by seeing the different behavior on the application based on the specific header then we were able to log in and feed that application into ff and then find additional endpoints that were vulnerable so that's one example of it that you can do so maybe your approach to getting authenticated isn't to find credentials or to sign up and get a actual uh, cookie but you can find other headers including x forward at four and everything else that's similar to it that will list down below that you can use to bypass authentication so far we have taken care of 
authentication and now we need to talk about authorization there's a difference between the two authentication is how you log in how you get past the login on this application versus authorization to me is being authorized to use a specific resource with authorization there's two different vulnerability types that come in the first one just being looking for on auth paths which means unauthenticated paths you can access that may have juicy information and require to be authorized or have some sort of a leverage access to be able to access that so for example think about a endpoint that may be maybe a list of users that this application is supposed to have access to but somehow or just by directly going to that list you can get a list of that user for that application you want to look at that because the difference between reporting that vulnerability as a hey information disclosure it leaks a list of users versus hey information disclosure it leaks the list of users to an on auth user those two have different severity levels and and obviously you want to make sure you look out for those so anytime you find a vulnerability or you find an endpoint that is juicy that is interesting it doesn't have to be a get request it could actually be a post you can just remove the cookie or you can remove your auth token or the bearer token whatever it is that you're authorizing yourself within the application and see if you can access that endpoint without the authorization header that has been a good place for me to double my bounties or actually escalate my bounties so keep that in mind but there's also another approach to authorization the second layer of authorization isn't applicable to a lot of apis but my favorite thing to do with authorization vulnerabilities is testing privilege escalation with different users so this is kind of similar to the last one but it requires this to have different user types so for example think of this as an hr program this hr program or application allows you to have maybe a member a manager and maybe some hr manager for example you want to be able to test out every single functionality within each of those different user levels and see which ones you have access to which ones you can use and which ones you cannot use a lot of times i feel like a lot of organizations introduce new functionalities into these applications and they completely forget to look for the different access controls or different access levels that these users have actually archangel douglas day has a really good talk from the homcon last year that he did on this i'll link it down below take a look at it but the approach to this is you make a list of all the different functionalities starting with the admin the highest level of access that you have and then you look at the different documentation and you mark which ones are supposed to have access to what so for example if you have something like submit an expense you want to make sure that you know an admin can submit an expense and a user can and so can a manager so those are applicable to three users but maybe the different functionality that isn't meant to be for all three is adding a user to the organization maybe the admin is the only one that can do that not the manager and not the different users that you have but you want to test out that functionality with the other two lower level privileges so that is a really good place it's very very manual and it's a lot of like work to do but a lot of people skip it because it's a, it's a lot of labor it's a lot of time but that's why you find better bugs if you spend the time to actually understand the application and understand the logic of this application in order to look for vulnerabilities and i kept the best for last by keeping the xss or maybe not, not even xss per se but looking at the content type of these apis for last because that is also one of the most underrated vulnerability types that a lot of people miss and that's because when you're interacting with an api a lot of times you expect the api to return a value in json format and if you're not familiar with this any api that comes back it's supposed to give you text it's supposed to be json and if you have html within a json content type then that html is not going to render but what i've noticed a lot of times is companies actually mess this up and they return an html within that response then the html will render and if you put cross -test scripting there it could fire the challenge here is to find a way for your html to get in the response sometimes you can't do that because of the uh, nature of the application but that is what makes it really really fun so the first thing you want to do here is you want to find a api endpoint that returns as a content type set to html then you want to find how can i get my input whether it's my path maybe it's something that i put in the post data or in the get request how can i get this input to reflect in the response while the content type is set to html those make for some really really cool vulns and a lot of cool challenges and then fuzzing that endpoint and seeing if there are any parameters or any way of getting an error that's going to just return whatever you have given it in the response they've been really really cool i found a ton of those in the past they're still very very valid but i feel like a lot of hackers miss that because you have to pay attention to the content type and a lot of time people don't look at it and that's why a lot of the top hackers and a lot of the better hackers win because they are paying attention to small details so 
that's pretty much all the vulnerabilities that I think I want to cover for this episode. There is one more. There is path traversal. If you want to see a full video on path traversal or GraphQL next, drop me a comment. Maybe I'll do one or the other. Maybe I do both. That depends on how many comments we get. So drop me a comment. Let me know which one you want to see next. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button and become a homie. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.